All right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Uh, good evening, bird brains, and welcome to the uh, live stream of the Harley models. I felt like a live stream would probably be the easiest way to do this since uh, everything is still so very new. We're still finding out information as it goes on. Fix the camera here. Um, all I did was pull up pictures of the, uh, the new Sportsters because I wanted to give my honest, real opinion as I'm seeing them. That way I don't come in with any preconceived notions or anything like that. I can give my honest first reactions. So uh, without any further ado, I want to start with the 48 first, or the 48 special, I should say. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into this and see um, the details, things like that. Walk through exactly uh, what it is here. Uh, that's not where I wanted to go. Okay, so they did offer it in different colors. That's one thing I was uh, worried about is because I was only seeing that uh, maroon. All right, so that... I have to say, I kind of like that, the black and orange. Is there blue on the bottom? I don't know how I feel about the blue on the bottom. And it looks like there's blue on the bottom. don't know how I feel about the blue. Let's check in. Okay, so this is the red one that I keep seeing. I just don't feel like it's, uh, it's out there enough for me, but they're not... Uh, they're not making it for me. They're making it for the masses. So there is blue on it. I don't know how I feel about that blue. I think they should have just stuck with the orange and the red. So in true Harley fashion, as you can see here, um, front fender and rear fender are staying the same. Pretty much everything is staying the same except that uh, tank. So the only thing they're changing is the, uh, the tank. Okay. Let's get out of here. 1200 Evolution engine. That's pretty much what came with the old one. Dark custom style. Balanced of blackout and chrome finishes give it the authentic custom attitude. I'm going to pull up another page here. Um, I want to compare it to the regular 48 to kind of see the difference. Okay, so I'm just looking at it side by side. I'm looking here in the, in the motor section. It looks like they took the black rocker boxes from the iron and put it on that. But then <laughs> they changed it from a black case on the bottom to a chrome case on the bottom, essentially giving it more chrome than it had before. Same wheels, same fork, same headlight, same tank size, same fender. They changed the bars, which I guess is nice. All right, so back to the, uh, the 48 here. Throwback 70s custom tank art. Bold, muscular attitude. A bulldog stance with a slam speedometer and peanut tank. Massive triple clamps and 49 millimeter front forks. Tall boy handlebars. I'm curious how these handlebars compare to the Street Bob. Um, I'm curious if they're the exact same handlebar. A solo seat. The new-ish shocks uh, all right specs and pricing let's look at everything here all right so vivid black starts at 11 2 that feels fair uh, color is just a little bit more which is nice abs options gonna run you 795 security 395 california mission another 100 bucks uh, air cooled Evo, 74 cubic inches, fuel injected. 
So I'm assuming that all these are going to be extremely similar to the uh, regular 48. Right here, fuel capacity still at 2.1 gallons. I get it. What they're looking for is that that stripped down, bare bones look. I just uh, I have a hard time understanding how I feel about that because I feel like if they're wanting to appeal to the younger uh, market, one that's going to cut down on weight, so that's going to help with beginner riders, and two, if we're appealing to like the the city dwelling millennials, they're not going to need the longer tank or the bigger tank for the longer rides. They're going to be doing bar hopping and stuff with their friends. So all right. I like the black. I like the black a lot more than any other colors. I just don't know how I feel about that blue. Performance, everything is pretty much exactly the same there. Does it say the weight on here? Oh, weight as shipped, 547, wet weight, 564. Like I said, that smaller tank does definitely help cut down on the uh, the weight. Overall, I I think the forty eight looks better with the tall bars um, more than the um, the twelve hundred iron. Which let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, the Iron 1200s. Let's go ahead and uh, flip through a couple pictures here. Oh, actually, here's a, a video here. Okay. <laughs> Was interesting all right so here is the 1200 iron right off the bat I will say just from the time that I have been looking at it that the uh, the apes are growing on me when I first saw it I was like I don't know how I feel about the apes on the Sportster but I feel like they're just short enough to not look too gaudy so I'm kind of digging the mini apes plus they're gonna be a lot more comfortable than something like a drag bar or anything like that from the front I feel ugh, I don't know how I feel about the the wide bars man I love the um, the little fairing of course I mean it's pretty much the exact same fairing I have on my my Sportster um, not a big fan of their big giant air intake I mean I get it because they have to they have so many rules they have to follow and I really like the seat I like how they went with that that square body seat I love the tank graphics, but I'm pretty sure they did the same colors. Yeah, we'll get to colors here in a second. I like the look of this motor a lot better than the um, 48 Special. They did the, the black and the black, the all black top rock, rocker boxes and the black bottom as well. See, from this angle, it looks good. I like it from this angle. And here's actually a picture of um, the bike with different bars, different air cleaner, different uh, oil cover here. And I will say, just with a couple little changes here and there, I do like the, uh, the smaller bars bigger than better than the bigger bars. But like I said, that's going to come with uh, comfort and things like that. So let's go to the uh, colors here. So the black looks awesome. This red. I absolutely hate. <laughs> I hate the. Uh, looks like they did gold on the tank. Uh, I just. I do like the uh, blacked out derby cover here on the side, though. I didn't notice that the first time I looked at it. 
That looks really good. That looks a lot better than the uh, 883. And then the white. Ugh. I just don't know how I feel about the white either. I felt like if they would have done... Oh, I mean, I guess it is the same. I mean, the, the graphics are kind of the same on the two. I wish they would have offered the black with uh, the orange and red on the tank instead of the blue. So my question is, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at specs, pricing, and all that. Um, all right, 1200cc Evo engine, blacked out finishes, throwback 70s. Cafe solo seat. I think the, the seat is a very nice upgrade from the uh, from the, the 883. Uh, blacked mini eight bars. I love the nine spoke wheels. I would love to find a, a set like that for the Dyna. And then the speed screen is what they call it. All right, specs and pricing, 547. So it's pretty much the same. So 3.3 gallon tank, same as the uh, 883. 564 um, on the weight. What was the 48? I want to say it was exactly 564. So wow, the 48 and the 1200 iron are the exact same weight, which... Uh, surprising i would think that the iron or the uh, 48 would weigh more with those big fat tires but i guess not i guess for the uh what weight that they're adding in the tires they're making up for in the smaller tank so vivid black 9999 color 10349 i feel like that price is fair i feel like it's weird that the iron 1200 is oh man it's quite a bit cheaper it's what thirteen hundred dollars cheaper than the 48 don't know where they're getting that but i feel like if it was between the two i feel like the iron 1200 wins all day Pretty much everything else is exactly the same on it as the iron just with the 1200 so I can see where people are just calling it the new Nightster which is I believe somewhat fair but I feel like it definitely looks better than the Nightster used to and the one complaint I've heard from a lot of people is we still have five gears which I just don't think that six gears in a Sportster is ever going to happen. I really don't. I feel like it's a little, uh, um, a little overkill. So I'm reading the comments now. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, go ahead and throw them up in the chat right now. Uh, John Maxwell commented, uh, apparently the third gallon of gas is weightless. Um, I, I kind of thought the same thing, but when you look at the difference in tires, I feel like the different size in tires would weigh a gallon of gas, honestly. Uh, Dewey did it, says Sporty can't push six gears, not enough power. I feel like on the 1200, it could probably do it. But once again, I believe it's overkill. I, I don't think that that fifth gear is topped out enough um, to really justify uh, six gear. Gonna go back and look through uh, uh, Rider Dice. So basically, the iron is blacked out motor and pipes with taller bars and a light fairing. It looks clearer than the 48 Special. I have to agree. Um, I definitely think that the 1200 looks better. Uh, but I will say I'm probably a little biased as I do have the uh, 883.
Did they lift the tank from the factory? I uh, don't believe so. It looks, at least on the... No, they both look stock to me. Bam Bam Harley Slam, I guess they are pricing it for the new market too. I kind of have to agree. Um, I was honestly expecting them to be a little bit more expensive uh, than they were just from the little things that I saw. Um, I I still, I am shocked that the Iron 1200 is cheaper than the 48, but that might be on purpose. Uh, I can't remember the exact term, but there is a term within businesses to put something close close in value but then make one cheaper or one more expensive um it's directly in relate or it's indirectly related to the theory of i call it the the movie theater theory is say for example if you have a medium bag that's 12 ounces and they want six dollars for it but then you've got the bucket which is 64 ounces but it's only a dollar more you're always going to pick the bigger one this one they do it the opposite you've got two things that are similar but you drop one a little bit below um, the other one to make that more enticing which makes me believe that the iron 1200 is cheaper to produce which means they're trying to sell more of that um the iron tank just looks a little higher to me uh i don't think it does honestly i think it might be it might be shaped differently let's see let me pull up a uh an 883 here. Uh, I don't know, honestly. Just from looking at where it bolts onto the frame, I don't believe it's raised. It might be raised in the rear, but I don't believe it's actually raised, raised. John Maxwell said, I think the 48 front end is super expensive. Uh, probably. Um, do you know off the top of your head if any other models are using that that same fork setup? Because the less amount that are using it, the more expensive it's going to be to make. I don't think... Uh, are the new Softails using the 49s? Yeah, they might be. Let's look at the lowrider here. Let's see if we can even get uh, an answer. Uh, new suspension technology provides the performance of a racing style cartridge fork for reduced weight and linear dampening. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. If anyone finds it, just let me know. I'm not seeing the uh, the fork size on this. Um, the thing that stinks is they don't hold their value. Can get a used Sportster for so cheap. That's also true. I guess you say also say it looks like the low rider as well. That's yeah. I can kind of see some of the similarities. Um, I think it's the the taller bars that are giving it that look. The slim front end looks similar, but it's different part numbers. Okay, so it's not the same. They should have put the inverted 750 front ends on. Iron 1200 front end has been used for years, meaning between production and replacement parts, there are luckily tons and tons of them. Yeah, I agree. That's what I went back to saying that the Iron 1200 is probably a lot cheaper to produce, essentially, because 
all of their parts that they're using to make this bike are already in production. Soft tail is a 50 or 52 millimeter now. I would believe that. All right, Bam Bam. Just being a, being a dick now. <laughs> I know John Maxwell is not working at Chattanooga. Okay, I was on day three of the build. I was tired. Give me a break. Why do they not offer six-speed transmission for Sportsters? Uh, we kind of went over that. I just don't believe that it's got enough. Uh, it, I believe it has enough power to do it. I don't believe it has enough power to do it well. Uh, plus, there's a lot of uh, little upgrades and stuff that you can do to um, to uh, to make it better on the highway and things like that. Uh, ben H, dual disc would have been nice. I agree. But I don't f agree on this model. I believe that they should offer, I don't even want to say this, but a 2018 Iron 1200 Special or even maybe something above a Special. Uh, like a Screaming Eagle edition or something like that, and put the um, inverted front forks with a dual disc setup. Um, I believe that would be pretty awesome, but that's going to come out of price, and that's going to uh, push away a lot of the the potential customers for a cheap bike like this. Need to bring back the XR1200. Uh, I believe there is a market for it. I don't believe that's going to be... Uh, it's big enough to justify the production costs. I also believe that the uh, the Street Series will be getting killed pretty soon. I don't believe they are making enough money on that to justify keeping them around. Plus, what I've also heard, I haven't seen this in person, but I've also heard that when they uh, have the demo trucks, that there is no Street Series bikes on the demo trucks, which makes no sense to me because that's their cheapest motorcycle and if you're trying to get beginner get beginner riders in there it would seem like a pretty pretty big no-brainer but i have to say i still like the roadster do i like it better than the iron 1200 mm. to me personally i would get the iron 1200 just because if i wanted to make it into a, a roadster i could do it better than they did if that makes any sense <laughs> But I am just now noticing between the 883 and the Iron 1200 is only a $1,000 difference. Do you think this is possibly uh, going to start dwindling away the 883? Have we seen the end of the 883 and just stick into the 1200? Maybe. Um... Dewey did it said, well put, you're better at changing the pulleys to make small exchanges and cheaper than a trans. That goes back to what I was saying about you can make the cheap, easy upgrades to make it better on the highway if that's what you do. Um, oh yeah, the Roadster does have the uh, the dual disc front brakes. I feel like that's a, that's a better bike to have that on anyways, just because of how it's built. I feel like that's definitely a better a better fit for it. I think they're trying to find the market that was left when the dyno was killed. If that is their goal, I believe they uh, are swinging a miss on that one just because it is still a sportster. I have to agree with uh, Tyler and Dewey. They're saying that uh, they believe the 883 is also going away. Um, I mean, if you look at the lineup, you've got five 1200 bikes and two 883 bikes. At one point, they're going to start uh, being more expensive to make than the 1200s are. So I believe the 1200 is going to start filling the 883 spot and we're going to see something bigger come out on the Evo platform. LED headlamps and signals, I don't believe so. I want to say they are uh, standard halogen bulbs. Uh, high beam neutral, better equipped. Uh, oh, it does have LED indicator lights. Well, that's on the gauge, never mind.
I don't think it's got the LED headlight. No, that looks like a... Nope, standard halogen bulbs on both the turn signals and the, uh, the headlights. Zach asked, what do you think the Bronx and Pan America will turn out to be? Um, I've got my hopes and I've got my realities. So the way that the trademark is filed for the Bronx and the Pan America, it could be anything from a parts line uh, to clothing to a new model. So I, I'm crossing my fingers for a Harley Street Tracker. Uh, something a little bit more aggressive than the, um, what's that one we were just talking about? The night, the Roadster. Something a little bit more aggressive than the Roadster. But, I don't know. With a name like Bronx, I'm thinking urban. I'm thinking city riding. Um, but that's if we're only considering it being a new model. Um, Pan America, I'll, I'll do the same approach here. Um, Realistically, I would like to see a um, almost like a sport glide in a sportster frame, something um, maybe for cross country and things like that. I heard some rumors of the Pan America being a Harley adventure bike. I highly, highly, highly doubt that. Uh, number one reason for that is um, I was actually listening to the Motorcycle Men podcast, and one of their guests on there used to work at a Harley dealership that also sold. BMWs. It was like a combination dealership. And he said that the um, the customer market was just so vastly different. The cultures were so vastly different. I don't see Harley making an adventure bike. I think it'd be cool. I'd like to see it, see what they do with it. But I don't think it's going to be an adventure bike. Um, but going back to what I said, I... I would like to see a, I'd like to see a Sportster with bags, honestly, a Sportster with bags and uh, a bigger fairing and some upgraded suspension, um, almost like a touring Sportster. I think that would have a market for sure, um, especially if they could keep this price point, uh, the sub 12 grand price point. I think that would appeal to a lot of people to kind of have a um, touring ready bike uh, under 12 grand. Um, I think they would benefit with the same upgrades as the new Dyna replacement lineup. Um, I'm guessing he's referring to like the lights and things like that. They can keep the amount of different engines down. Production costs and consumer costs could come down, possibly allow better focus and engineering into the few models. Yes, but you're talking about a lot of engineering feats. Um, what I see the sports line doing not this year, not next year, maybe not even the next four or five years, but eventually I see a reiteration of the Milwaukee 8, almost like a, a mini Milwaukee 8 being shrunk down to go into the Sportsters. The Evo motor has been in production since I believe the early 80s. So I feel like it's coming, although it's it's arguably one of the best Harley motors ever made. And a lot of people will will we'll fight me for that but just looking at the amount of time it's been in production and uh, its reliability compared to the rest it arguably is one of the best but i feel like it's uh its reign is slowly coming to an end just because the milwaukee 8 is so advanced it is so much of a uh, a bigger leap over its replacements If they painted the bags to match the sport glide, I would think it had gone over better than it did, which was like a turn in a punch bowl. Did they not paint the bags? I actually didn't even notice that. I've only seen a black one in person, so... I'm sorry, an African-American one in person. What? What is this site doing? Why does it keep taking me back to this? don't want to look at these I want to look at oh wow it is they're not painted they are just uh, flat black huh I've never noticed that like I said I 
pretty much only seen. I've only seen the, the black one in person. Man, those are some ugly colors, man. That's actually one thing I brought up uh, to some of the guys is if they um, if they really want to appear to a younger market, I think they need to get a little crazy with uh, their paint schemes, not going back to what they were doing in the 70s, but start something completely, uh, completely different. Um, maybe not as of aggressive as uh, Honda's highlighter yellow <laughs> on their new Rebel series, but I'd like to see like a like a lime green or just something something crazy, something that doesn't say Harley, just something something that Harley has never done before, a completely new paint code. Matte black bags look like an afterthought. I kind of have to agree with you now that I'm actually seeing it. And um, also, I mean, the price point on these is just stupid. 18.6 starting. Mm-mm. I think all the motors will eventually go liquid cooled. Um, eventually, yes. I wouldn't say in the next five to ten years. I think we might be seeing uh, the air cooled for a little bit longer. The Milwaukee Eight is sort of liquid cooled. It's not your your standard, but it's it's not as air cooled. I agree. They keep putting up the same colors. I mean, it's it's true. I mean black, red, gray. I want to see something something crazy, something out of this world. So uh, closing thoughts. I'll go ahead and uh, start wrapping it up here. 48 special. I feel like um, it's kind of going in line with Harley's, uh, what are they called, P and P moves the the paints and parts where basically they're just taking what they have already painting it maybe throwing on a couple different parts and calling it a new model uh well this one's a 48 special so i wouldn't say a new model but overall i sort of like the way it looks would it be the bike for me absolutely not i could not live with a two gallon tank i will say the taller bars have grown on me just looking at it for this uh little time here don't know what they were doing with this this chrome down here i feel like the special bikes need to be more blacked out than this also these pipes are just just strange uh price point is i feel like it's fair based on the other 48 but i feel like they're kind of missing the mark overall um the iron 1200 i really like will i be trading in my sportster for one no, uh, I would like the extra power in the Sportster, but for just a grand or so, I could make mine faster than this, uh, which is one of the reasons why I feel like the used market is so crappy on Sportsters is because it's so oversaturated. You can pretty much do anything you want with it for pretty much dirt cheap. So... Zach, to attract millennials, they need to reduce their sale price because it is difficult for millennials to make money these days, even if they work their ass off. I have to disagree. Um, I'm a millennial and I have two bikes and I wasn't had anything. So I feel like, I don't feel like they need to price the new bikes low enough. I don't feel like new bikes should be in that realm of grasp aside from the street series of sportsters for those who just have to have the new bikes i feel like the used market is plenty saturated enough for those kind of people um that maybe they had kids young or something like that i understand those situations but just saying the millennials in general i kind of have to disagree just because of my personal experience but what people understand is used bikes don't keep factories open <laughs> so uh, they're kind of they're kind of between a rock and a hard place on that one. Um, I think if they offered a model with the, the majority of the buyers are doing percentage-wise in customization, they may get a better response in sales, fairings, T-bars, etc. I agree and disagree. Uh, I agree in the fact that it would probably attract more people. 
especially with oh my god the new soa spinoffs coming in i feel like i'm curious i'd love to see if harley has any investments in that because they saw a two percent increase on sales year on year as that show is going on so i'd love to see if they funneled any money into getting those series restarted but um I feel like the people that go for those kinds of bikes are more of the type that want to do it themselves. Uh, So I feel like they'd be kind of uh, taking a gamble with it. Do you think parts for the other Sportsters will be compatible? John pretty much already answered that. Everything 14 and later fitment will work. It's the same bike with PNP paints and parts. So the frame's the same, motor's the same. Pretty much everything is the same. The big customization bike was the Dyna, so they have to figure out another way in the market again. That's that's where I kind of have a, a struggle because I do, I do feel with most millennials that people don't want to build bikes anymore. They don't want to put the, the effort into... Um, You know, spending the money, spending the time, learning the skills to get in and and build a bike themselves. I'm I'm definitely not the norm (laughs) of people uh, 25 years of age. A 25 year old Harley rider in general is kind of unheard of, or not unheard of, but pretty rare um, compared to you know your old farts that that live, eat, breathe, sleep, and live Harley. But I feel like that's going to be the big, uh, the big problem. And one thing got brought up uh, in our Moto Vlogger group with uh, John Maxwell, Blackhead, do it with Dan, not do it with Dan, <laughs> Dan Dan the Fireman, and uh, Moto Noob Rider is. I feel like one thing driving millennials away so much right now is those old heads. As I told, I I got uh, I think it was on uh, B Rad's um, post. He had someone just go on and comment just a bunch of Harley nonsense, just like, oh, you yada, yada, yada. And then a guy had shared his story about how, um, you know, he gets he gets hate from Harley riders all day long. And I told him, I said, the one, the one group of people that the majority, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say all because that's, that's totally against my cause, but the stigma, the stereotypical Harley rider, the one group that they hate more than the sport bike riders is the younger generation Harley riders that don't do and don't do and don't like what they like. The, the, a lot, a lot of old heads absolutely hate my style of Dyna. They think it's absolutely garbage. They hate the sportsters. They hate all the new fancy technology coming out on bikes. They just, they hate it. They want one guy even said what Harley needs to do to save themselves is to bring out another 96 cubic inch carbureted motor. What <laughs> you want to put old technology, but it's just, yeah, I, I completely um, disagree with that statement. So one thing we were talking about in the group and, um, we've got evidence to back it up is I feel like Harley was at its peak, you know, probably seventies, eighties when everyone wanted that, that rebel badass look. And then as time started going on, it started kind of decreasing. And one thing I feel like the reason that's decreasing is hold on. I'm going to give me one second. I want to pull up a comment that uh, blockhead got on his millennial video. Y'all go check that out. Um, great opinions on that one pretty much nailed it but this is one of the comments that he got on the video that i feel just absolutely nails it It says i think the part that dissuades me the most is when i read some fat old effers in the comment section spouting the back in my day bs about how soft millennials are i didn't choose when my parents effed i liked good i like good music i appreciate easy rider and the sound of a v-twin just let me enjoy bikes without shitting down my throat because you can't get your d up anymore a little bit aggressive (laughs) now that i'm reading it out loud a little bit aggressive but i feel that uh he pretty much nailed it that the one thing that dissuades 
the younger Harley riders the most is the older Harley riders. And I'm not pointing fingers by any means, but I feel like that culture kind of needs to change because the stigma and the stereotypes around um, Harley is just so deeply embedded within its brand. But how I made the, the mention of it started going down, I feel like we're, we're right on the verge of that kind of starting to go on an uptick. The reason being, the reason being is that those old heads, the, the really hardcore ones especially, are on their way out. Not being cynical, but their riding days are limited, both physically because they can't ride or because they're going to they're gonna die, basically. They're, they're old. And I feel like once some of that negativity kind of dies off, no pun intended, that um, the newer generation that is you know, trying to, to spread the word of, Hey guys, it's not what it used to be. Like what you've seen isn't how it is. I feel like that will start the, the upward trend again. I will, I mean, I want to bring this up on a future live stream with some of the other Harley vloggers, but I mean, I just take a look at my fan mail wall. I have dozens of letters and I'm a smaller channel comparatively, but dozens of dozens of letters of saying, I would have never thought of buying a Harley until I found your channel. You inspired me to get a Harley. You inspired me to get a motorcycle, period. And I feel like if someone as small and as just unseen as me can do it, as, you know, I mean, Blockhead just passed 35,000. John Maxwell passed 10,000 in six months. Like, they're getting the views. Uh, Dan Dan, I think he's coming up on 25K. Those views, those those audience that those audiences that we as YouTubers are reaching are going to just spread like wildfire. I think that's that's, that's totally my prediction. But I feel like that is what is going to hopefully bring Harley out of that slump. And that's kind of what I said when I started my channel: is I don't I want to prove that not all Harley riders are assholes. Just just most of them. So I feel like the number of assholes is just going to to kind of, you know, die off and the Harley coach culture will, will change. That's my, um, that's my beliefs, but let's go to the conversation one more time before we wrap it up. Uh, let's see. It's like car buyers hating on sedans versus hatchbacks. There shouldn't be that hate between different models of the same manufacturer. I may hate Ford Focuses, but love an F-250. Um, kind of uh, lost me on that one. Um, I like the looks. Everyone always hates the new models. Look at FXRs now. Colt following. That's a perfect example. Everyone hated the FXRs when they came out, and now they're like the godsend of, of Harley. Um, Uncle Ken, you're spot on. People don't always like change until they experience it. That's referring to the FXR comment. And I have, I absolutely agree. I, when the 2018 lineup came out, I still have some of my reservations about them. Um, the low riders growing on me still hate the street Bob just because of that small, tiny tank, uh, fat Bob. Absolutely love it. We'll probably be test riding one of those within the next couple of weeks. Uh, but don't get excited. Probably not going to buy it. Uh, old Harley riders are too stuck on old times. I get the looks of crazy and rejection because for one, I'm a thirties Brown guy with a Harley jacket and riding a sport bike. <laughs> um, <laughs> Taz ride says was talking about washing my bike to a friend and a guy overheard me and asked what kind of Harley I had. I never mentioned what kind of bike I had. I guess I fit that stereotype stereotype of a fat bald guy with a beard. Hey man, I'm I'm on my way to being bald, so I'm I'm right there. Um, it also doesn't help when Triumphs and other brands come with more tech on the bikes for cheaper. Um, I will say that Indian is probably more of a competition to Harley than Triumph is right now. Uh, I checked out some of their bikes at the IMS. And I, I was with Uncle Ken. I sat on those bikes and I said, Harley's in trouble. <laughs> if, if they don't get, uh, if they don't shake this stigma and let Indian even in the door a little bit, Indian's going to, Indian's going to win the market. 
Um, kind of feel all the motorcycle brands are trying to bring back a OEM retro inspired design back instead of coming up with something original. I have to agree, Jason. That's one thing I was talking to Miss Bird about is the new tech old styling is, I feel like that's going to appeal more to the older generation than it is the newer generation. Um, aside from the hipsters that like the old look, but, um, Ken said there's assholes in every motor scene, Mustang, Corvette, GTO, and that's absolutely correct. I mean, you've got Camaro guys that hate Corvettes, you've got Corvettes that hate Mustangs, Mustangs that hate anything, Mopar, like, it, it exists everywhere. Victory is up there. Uh, meh. Indian being around is what got HD to finally change. I welcome competition. HD needed it. That is absolutely spot on, John. Um, competition brings out the best in most people. So I feel like uh, that is uh, spot on. I bought my first Indian over Sporty, and you're right. They are an awesome bike. I will say I love the way that Indian looks. Um I've never ridden one of their bikes, so I can't speak for their handling or anything like that. But uh, just sitting on some of their bikes at IMS and seeing the tech that they have built into the bikes for either the same price point or cheaper, that's what leads me to believe that uh, HD might be in trouble. And yeah, victory is dead. I was, I was, I didn't want to say anything because I wasn't 100% sure. <laughs> I get victory and um, the other one. Um, Vulcan, the Kawasaki cruisers. I get those mixed up. Do -do -do. All right, guys. Well, um, this one's starting to run a tad bit long. I uh, hope you liked this uh, style of video. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down in the description or in the comment section. If you have anything specific that you would like me to follow up on on the uh, on this topic, once again, leave it down in the comments, and I will try my best to uh, to make a video. I plan on doing this style of video pretty much any any time a new model is released. That way I can just get my opinion out there fast. That way I don't have a billion messages asking me, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? So, um, yeah, leave, leave down in the comments what you think. Um, upcoming, upcoming videos um, this week, I'm announcing my official um, upload schedule change. Also, I'm in the works of uh, finally partnering with a Harley dealership to do some test rides. So um, that should be upcoming. And also Build Series Episode 11. Um, don't have a set date for that, but um, we'll have some updates on the Sportster rebuild coming very soon. So um, yeah, I've got uh, nothing else today. So thank you guys for stopping by. Um, thanks for being so active in the chat. And uh, let me know what you think down there in the comment section below.